Oh my goodness, how delicious is that? Hello friends, I'm Philly Philly and welcome to my kitchen. So we're continuing our French series that I've wanted to do since the beginning of the year called uh, French Food at Home, which is based on a cookbook about one of my favorite authors and chefs, uh, Laura Calder, she's a home cook. And it was a series that I used to watch on the cooking channel. And today I'm giving a bonus episode of fish. Fish is one of the favorite things Hubs and I like to eat and it's appealing because it cooks quickly, you can make a yummy dinner very fast and it's nutritional. And I wanted to provide another uh, recipe that caught my eye. The recipe is for crisp vinaigrette fish. What I loved about this recipe was how approachable and easy and quick it is. I feel like it's something that any of us can throw together in 10 minutes and have on the table and have it be elevated and feel like something special. That's one of the things I'm learning about French cooking is sometimes it can get fancy and involved like a souffle, but other times it's very simple flavors, simple techniques, but it's all about the ingredients. So today for our crisp vinaigrette fish, we are gonna be using some salmon from the Faroe Islands. I luckily have a really good fishmonger here in the city but you can um, just see whatever is the best fish for you to get where you are. I know depending upon where we live, we might be limited. And any fish that isn't super flaky would be great for this because it's going to be for all intents and purposes, kind of a salad, a warm salad. So the salmon will be great. The fish that she used was snapper. Um, but like I said, anything that has some firmness to it. And the other ingredients we're gonna need are some cherry or grape tomatoes. These are cherry tomatoes, as well as some arugula. Now, not everyone likes arugula, and so what I would suggest is to try it this way because the way it's gonna be used, it's gonna be cooked super briefly, which will take the edge off, but it is a bitter green. But I love the contrast of something like arugula with a fatty fish, especially like salmon, and with the vinaigrette that we're making, it really plays off nicely. You could substitute it with spinach or kale. Um, any of the other lettuces, I would not recommend even putting in the pan, just lay them on your plate and then put the tomato mixture on top with the dressing after the fish cooks if you really don't like any of the bitter, more bitter greens. I do think spinach might fall apart a little bit more than you want it to. I think arugula is really the best one for it. We're gonna need some balsamic vinegar, get the best you can, as well as olive oil, the best you can as well. Salt and pepper and some butter and then we're good to go. So to start, we need to pierce all of these cherry tomatoes uh, just with a knife. I think this is going to aid in the cooking. Now I'm a fan of blistering. Let's see, I'm just putting it right into the tomato. I've already done the rest. We're gonna be blistering these tomatoes in the hot pan, which is why I think she's suggesting doing the piercing with a knife. I don't know that it's necessary. I love actually making sauces and doing pastas with some blistered tomatoes. Um, so I never do that, but I'm gonna try it. So I'll let you know if I notice something different having done that. And we're gonna get our pan really warm in the back and I'll meet you over there. While our pan is heating, I am gonna put salt and pepper on our salmon fillets and get them ready. Salt and pepper. And we're gonna sprinkle some kosher salt or sea salt if you prefer. There it is, all set to go. Okay, and once our pan is hot, we are gonna put a tablespoon of oil, olive oil into the pan, and put the tomatoes in. And you can hear them start to crackle and pop, which is exactly what you want. This is a technique that is called blistering and we are shocking the potatoes and helping them soften a bit and heat up. She does not say to add salt and pepper, but I'm going to add a little bit of salt and pepper because I'm used to layering all the flavors. There we go. Just another couple minutes. See how they're starting to get color on them? I have it on medium high heat right now. Okay, at this point, they look pretty nice and blistered. I'm gonna be adding two handfuls of arugula. Now, we love arugula, so I made big handfuls. And I'm just gonna toss it a little bit and then transfer it to a plate. 
just allow this to wilt just ever so slightly. And now let's toss it to a plate. Two plates. I'm going to get the arugula there first. Spread that around on the plates. Make a nice little bed. Definitely getting our veg in for today. And now let's get the tomatoes in. And this is ready to go until the fish is ready. To cook our fish, we're going to add another tablespoon of olive oil, as well as a tablespoon of butter. Adding them both enables you to get some flavor from the butter, but a higher smoke point from the olive oil. Here's our fish. I'm going to start with the skin side down. Always place it away from you when you're using hot butter or oil. I again still have it on the medium high heat. Okay, it's been cooking for about three to four minutes. You can see it's starting to come up on the sides there. I'm going to flip it. And get the other side. Look how nicely that skin got all crispy. I wanna get all the buttery and goodness in there. Get some of that on our fish and let's give it a few more minutes on this side okay about three more minutes on this side we do like our salmon to be medium rare so I'm gonna take it off and plate it look at that color do you see that gorgeous color there oh that's perfect oh, and look at that gorgeous and they will still continue to cook a little bit um, as they're resting so the last thing we're going to do is we're going to be adding balsamic vinegar now i recently got this from my sister from italy so i'm going to be using that and we're going to glaze the pan that's two teaspoons now they suggest or i should say laura suggests adding more oil at this point but I'm wondering I don't know I do like a balsamic vinaigrette that has a little bite so I'm gonna taste first just want to get every little bit of that luscious luscious flavor and I do want this to reduce a little bit it's gonna be our dressing Okay, so what I didn't realize is, I don't know if it's because I was using a really good and thick balsamic, but we have a lot of burnage here. So I am not gonna use this. So I'm going to try making the vinaigrette fresh, because it tastes charred, with some butter, olive oil, and I'm just gonna use a lesser expensive one that I get um, from our market and uh, <laughs> try that one because I don't know if just the oil was too hot or what. So I know this won't have some of the fish flavor, but I'm hoping this will at least do the trick and make a bit of a vinaigrette. I am gonna add a little bit of salt or pepper here. So I would not wanna put what had happened on. So I wanted to make sure and let you know about that. So do, do check when you make this and make sure maybe that it's not so high heat. So I've already turned it down so this can reduce a little bit. And see, it's not separated like that other one did. The other one, I don't know if you can see, but there's like black specks in there. Um, and it just burned. Made me very sad. But this I just wanted to have flavor. It's just gonna be a warm dressing. So let me taste it. Oh, that's delicious. So I'm sad not to use my fancy balsamic, but I do think that <laughs> for the interest of this, I want to make sure that nothing happens and we don't want to get any burnage. So do watch this part carefully. If you make the vinaigrette, maybe take it off the heat when you reduce it um, and don't keep it on the heat. That would be my suggestion. And I wouldn't use a fancy one. The one that I actually had that my sister got me is, is actually such a delicious one that it is 
it's thickened even though it is not a glaze it's a little bit thickened so i think maybe the sugar in there came together for not good stuff so now let's put this over our fish so here we have our beautiful fish and we're just going to drizzle some of that over that one and drizzle it over this one Get a little bit other spots so let's take a look at that oh my goodness how delicious is that okay let's give this a try Mm. absolutely delicious so delicious and what a light summer meal this is and it came together so quickly i hope you get a chance to try this french food at home crisp vinaigrette vinegar fish you could play around with different vinegars and see which one pleases your palate the most and thank you so much for watching please make sure to like subscribe and share and from philly philly to your family until we eat again. Bye friends.